Welcome back to another episode of Entertainment News Break. We're your hosts. I'm Mercedes. And I'm Brandon. Hulu's hit series Freakish returns this October with its second season. If you're new to the series Freakish, a spinoff of The Breakfast Club and The Walking Dead, follows a group of students during time at detention where they must find a way to survive when their peers are turned into zombies following a chemical plant explosion. This time around, the students are still stuck inside with all new survivors who join them and put their relationships to the test. With brand new cast members, Freakish Season 2 premieres October 18th on Hulu. Speaking of The Walking Dead, are you ready for this season? That's right, Season 8 of The Walking Dead is here with an all-out war between Rick's forces and Negan. Things aren't looking too good for Rick and his force, and there's no end to their suffering. All for our enjoyment, of course. Zombie drama and more is in store for this season, coming to our screens October 22nd on AMC. Jordan Peele, right after his directorial debut in high grossing film Get Out, is back behind the creator table with an all-new comedy series. Coming to TBS this October is The Last OG, starring Tracy Morgan, who plays Trey, an ex-con who must transition back to society after his 15-year stint. Morgan, who is an executive producer, says the show is not about the black experience, but more so about second chances and redemption. Tune in to watch the new series October 24th on TBS. Tyler Perry is bringing back our favorite character of his. Medea and the Gang returns to theaters this month for a sequel to their first Halloween stint. Boo 2 and Medea Halloween follows Medea, Bam, and Hattie running for their lives on a haunted campground when monsters, goblins, and even the boogeyman are released. See as Medea's past catches up with her in this hilarious film coming to theaters October 20th. Also coming to theaters October 20th is a comedy horror film where two girls become an overnight sensation for reasons you wouldn't believe. Starring Josh Hutcherson and Alexandra Ship, Tragedy Girls follows two death-obsessed best friends who kidnap a serial killer and hold him hostage in order to mentor him. They become national news when their town learns of their crime. Stardom begins to put a strain on their friendship and the two girls must find a way to get a hold of it and not get caught. A mystery is solved with our last film of the night. Wonderstruck brings us the story of a boy and a girl from very two different eras, each wishing their lives were different. Ben is longing for a father and Rose is always dreaming about an actress whose life she captures in her scrapbook. It's when both children set out to get what they want is when they put the missing pieces of the puzzle together and unfold a mesmerizing mystery. Wonderstruck comes to theaters October 20th. Well, that's all we have for TV and movie news. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we will have Pope with a movie review on The Big Sick. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Pope here, and I'm here to review The Big Sick. First, I want to let you all know, this is the first, and I mean very first, romantic comedy I've ever paid to go see in a movie theater my entire 21 years on this earth. I just don't really like romantic comedy as uh, like a genre and all that other stuff, but my sister's boyfriend wanted to go see it, so I went to go see it. And honestly, I loved it. Not liking romantic comedies, I went to go see it, and I loved the story, I loved the characters, well, most of them, and I just thought it wasn't like any romantic comedy that you typically see. It wasn't the cookie cutter, like heterosexual white people, you know, romantic comedy we're all used to. So some of the pros of the movie, it's a unique and true story. Like this movie is based off of a true story and you don't really know that unless one, you do research or two, you wait to watch the credits where they show pictures of the real life people this is based off of. And I thought that was really neat that, you know, this is actually, this was a true story of two people falling in love and it wasn't just like people sitting in a room saying, what can we sell, you know, to this generation of romantic comedy goers. And like it gave some real like, you know, background and real emotions to the story. And another thing I liked was it was actually funny. Like I actually like laughed a lot. There was true jokes. It wasn't like, you know, corny jokes that we see a lot on like television and movies and stuff like that. These were actually funny. Like there was actually a funny poop joke. Like you don't get many of those in movies nowadays, but it actually had one in there. And it pulled on your emotions. A lot of the times, yeah, during romantic comedy, you're just like, oh, they, you know, they're alone and all this other stuff and you want them to be together. But this one actually, you know, it made you feel more than like sadness and like other emotions like that. It made you feel like a whole range of emotions. And I thought that was like really interesting and really good on the movie aspect to keep you interested because I thought it was kind of long. Now for the cons aspect of this movie, there's actually not that many. Um, you know, I thought the writing was good, you know, because it was a true story and the characters were really well written, but 
the one aspect I didn't like was when the one character was recovering, you know, she was in the coma and then like all of a sudden the next day she's like, oh, nope, I'm good now. Let's go home. I'm fine. And part of me was just like, you were just in like a coma for like weeks or a week or whatever. It's like, you don't just like pop up and doctors aren't just like, oh well, yeah, let's pull this, you know, the tube down your throat right out. You can breathe fine. There was part of me that was like kind of skeptical at the realism of that. But then I told myself it's a movie and it reminds a comedy and you got to calm down. Another con I didn't really, you know, like about the movie was that Bo Burnham's character were, I think he was supposed to be the but he just kind of came really hard at it. Like, I get it, that was his character and his group of friends were, you know, they were trying to make it big as comedians and it's like a, you know, dog eat dog world. So I get it, but just like, I feel like Bo Burnham's a nice guy in the movie, you know, yeah, kind of made him not seem like a nice guy. Also, the movie make me like Ray Romano and I was like, didn't know he was Ray Romano at first and then like all of a sudden it was just like, Ray Romano, because I was like, I know his voice, because you know his voice. And I was like, oh my god. I actually liked the character, found out he was Ray Romano. Still kind of like the character. I thought the parents were really funny in that movie. And they did have a lot of like current good jokes. Um, you know, with the parents involved and like the comedy scene with like the ISIS thing. I thought that the movie played it on really well with the parents. Now, do I want more of this romantic comedy type-esque thing? Honestly, yeah, I thought it was really well played out. And you know, the fact that it was based on a true story, I actually really enjoyed that aspect. And I want more true stories. I want more diverse characters that this movie gave. So Hollywood, you gotta step up your game. We're gonna take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we have Brandon with the box office top five. Tiffany and Olivia will be discussing this week's hottest celebrity news. Don't miss it. Okay, well, I guess there's this thing going on at Sutton Hall about, about some type of ghost whatever. Okay, go with that. Wait. Just your first instinct. Do it, ASAP. No, wait, ghosts? Don't you think that we just... Oh, uh, think? No. This is a reality show. We don't think, we do. <laughs> Get after me! <laughs> do something, Mike! Alright you babies, you're in Sigma Delta Omega territory now. Uh, you! What? Jump this. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! Presenting Schizophrenia! Welcome back. I'm Brandon and I'm here to bring you this week's box office top five. Taking number five this week is Kingsman the Golden Circle, directed by Matthew Vaughn. The film focuses on the Kingsmen and their journey after their headquarters is destroyed and the world is held hostage. They discover an allied spy organization and must work together to defeat the enemy. And number four this week is that one that all kids have been waiting for, My Little Pony the Movie. In this film, a dark force threatens Ponyville when the ponies must travel beyond Equestria and face exciting challenges when they use the magic of friendship to save their village. And number three, we have the remake of Stephen King's It. This story follows the horror stories of a shape-shifting demon that takes the form of a clown, otherwise known as Pennywise, who hunts and kills children. Check out this film in theaters now. Taking the second spot this week is the new action drama, The Mountain Between Us. Kate Winslet and Idris Elba star in this film about two strangers who, after surviving a plane crash, must survive the elements and journey through the snow to find help. 
Our number one spot of the week belongs to Ryan Gosling's latest film, Blade Runner 2049. Directed by Denis Villeneuve, this sci-fi mystery follows a young Blade Runner's discovery of a long-buried secret which leads him to track down the former Blade Runner, Rick Deckard, who has been missing for 30 years. So far, this one was brought in $32.7 million at the box office. And that's it for this week's Box Office Top 5. I'm Brandon, and up next we have Pope and I discussing romantic comedies. Hi guys, welcome back to our movie discussion segment. We're going to do things a little bit differently this time uh, with Pope seeing their first romantic comedy and Pope and I both being extremely unromantic people. I thought it'd be a great idea to talk about romantic comedies as a genre and just romance and film. So what was it that made you sort of not really interested in romantic comedies, Pope? I feel like that it's just because a lot of the romantic comedies, especially nowadays, are like cookie cutter. Mm. Like, they're all, they have the same like actors, like they have the same like attractive people and they have the same like plot lines. Like, you know, big CEO goes home and rekindles romance with high school, like lover she had back in the day and stuff like that. And so like, it just like, I never felt like the need to go see them because like, once you saw one, you saw them all. So I'm like, I, and they never had interesting like plot twists or like mm -hmm. they never left anything to the imagination. Like you knew they were either gonna end up together or they weren't at the end. So it was just like kind of pointless for me to go see them. Yes, and and with the few I've seen, it isn't even just so much it's cookie cutter, it's just as borderline unrealistic. It's just like a, one of the most popular ones that really took off despite not really being all that well reviewed was uh, Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. And it mostly succeeded for people because the two of them were very likable characters, but the whole concept of Friends with Benefits doesn't really work. <laughs> but it's, you know, they do this whole plot of um, that, and then afterwards it's like, and then they end up together, the end, happy ending. But um, to me, th that movie worked okay. I mean, it's, it's a crowd pleaser, but um, my favorite romantic comedy is a little film called uh, Low. Um, it's an independent film that is about this guy whose girlfriend died recently, so he tries to summon her back through a satanic ritual. And instead, a demon comes back um, and tries to help him get his girlfriend back. And there's like a really sweet twist at the end as, as to everything that's going on. But uh, that kind of gives a good impression <laughs> of my spectrum of romantic comedy. <laughs> now see, that, sound, that sounds like interesting though, because it offers something that a lot of like, it, it is unrealistic, but it's unrealistic to like a great extent. Mm -hmm. Like it's not leaving up to the, like, it's not like a storybook, you know? Like it's not like the princess gets with the prince in the end. It's like this dude summons a demon and God knows what's gonna happen. Like right. that is actually interesting to me because yes. you don't know what's going to happen. But with a lot of romantic comedies nowadays, it's like, you know, like it's going to just either end up them getting together or they're gonna get together with someone. A lot of the times right. you rarely see people ending up alone and crying in their like bedroom eating ice cream in these movies. And that's why you liked The Big Sick because the characters actually had like some dimension to them? Oh yeah, like I thought, especially like the main character cause it did keep you guessing like along the way. Yes. And you know, it, the characters were very unique and it was based on a true story so it did feel real Yeah. in a way and it also, I thought that, um, you know, the fact that it played with different religions and stuff like that and family right. expectations and different cultures, that really made it realistic for me. And honestly, because it was like a longer movie, it did take a lot of plot twists you didn't see. Yeah. Like when she was first in the coma, like I honestly thought the movie was gonna end there. Like he was just gonna like have to live with his life and you know, she was either gonna die or make it. And then she got better. And then, you know, I cut the hopeful part of me was like, oh, you know, she's gonna be like, you know, yeah, I love you. But then she was yeah. like, no, 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 get away from me. So I thought that was like really interesting and realistic. Like when you wake up from a coma, first like, I did feel though that she was, a lot of people would have been more understanding. Right. When it came to like the culture and the religious thing, like her character was just kind of like, you're cheating on me with these women and like ran off. And I feel like that was kind of unrealistic in that aspect, but I feel like it did keep you guessing throughout it and the characters were so unique and yes. relatable per se. And these days, I mean, mostly it's it's not so much, I mean, because you know, you and I don't really go to see romantic comics, we go to see big superhero movies and they're trying to shove like, you know, romantic stuff into those too. 
And I think it's getting to this point where there's a big debate between people that want the romance in there and want, you know, to, to kind of feel something from it, and people that want the characters to just be friends, and sometimes that can take some of the emotion out of it. Um, so, like, I think a good example is Wonder Woman, the new Wonder Woman film, where they portrayed the uh, relationship between her and Steve, and it was mostly just kind of friendly, like, they just kind of got each other and they worked along fine, but I guess just because of expectations, they have a scene at the end of the movie where they go into a hotel and they kiss, and it's like, they force the romanticness into it. And to me, I feel it still would have worked fine, and that's the thing, like, you have to carefully balance it or else you're gonna kind of just, be, there's gonna be too much or it's just gonna be like, what were they even doing? And I, I totally get that. Like, I see, especially in like a lot of movies like we enjoy, I see a lot of unnecessary romance just like thrown in there. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of the X-Men movies, like I understand there was like a big like love triangle between like Wolverine, Cyclops, and you know, Jean Grey. But like, do you have to emphasize it that much? Like, I get it, like, there's, like, romance, like, there, and it's, like, kind of needed for the tension between Wolverine and, like, Scott, right. but also at that point, it's just like, this is a superhero movie, like, come on, come and, on now. And, like, with Iron Man, like, th like the other problem with romance is you just kind of need to develop it or it goes nowhere, so mm -hmm. they eventually just end them. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's all we have for now. After the break, we have Tiffany and Olivia with this week's Hottest Celebrity News. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm Haley. I'm Kane. Hi, I'm Haley, and you're watching Witticism. You're watching Witticism. And you're watching Witticism. <laughs> hey guys, we're back. That's Olivia. And that's Tiff. And we're back to bring you the hottest, the latest, the juiciest celebrity news. Okay, they're back. They made their way back into our discussion. The Kardashians. Kylie Jenner is pregnant. <sighs> I feel like all the Kardashians always end up <laughs> just getting pregnant, like somehow, some way, yep. by some random guy. Like not some random, but like guy. some like rapper. Like I always <laughs> feel rapper. like it's a rapper. <laughs> it kind of is. Like she was just with Tyga. Now she's with Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. And now they're apparently having a baby. Did she come out and make a statement at all? I, I don't even seen know. Her said any, seen, like, said anything about it. Like, I've just still seen her naked body all over Instagram and stuff like that. Um, and people, <laughs> like, making that meme with her and that. Um, right. Yeah, <laughs> like, with squeezing that. the baby or something. I'm like, just, wow. Uh, I'm, like, are you surprised by this? You know what? No. I don't, I, don't I don't think I am. It's just like they're always going to be in the news. I mean, mm. Kendall will probably be pregnant like next week. Yeah, she's like the only one that seems like kind of sane. Yes. But I feel like that she's doomed. She's like actually the only one I like. Like she can't yeah. mess this up for me. I'm not really a Kim fan. Right. Like I don't mean that to be rude. Sorry to all the Kardashian fans, <laughs> but I think that they're very... I why are you famous? Yeah. yeah. They're just very outfit, fake like. in the face and just, I'm <laughs> like. in the face and the body too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so Courtney's pregnant too, apparently. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, that. she she can get pregnant. Like you, you can get pregnant. Kylie, you can't get, get pregnant. pregnant. Like, no, like that's. You're like still 17 and you're pregnant. I mean, not that there's she's anything wrong with that. She's only 17 years like, old. So. I don't know. I probably made that up. I don't know how she is. <laughs> I don't really care about her. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to all the Kardashian fans. We're just not fan of yours. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> so we're gonna move on to other news. We're gonna talk about like something that's like really like big in the media right now. Apparently Harvey Weinstein, I hope I'm saying that right. He's like a big producer and he's really famous and he has like the Weinstein company. 
Well, he doesn't have it anymore. But apparently he sexually assaulted a lot of celebrities that he's worked with. And they're coming oh. out now and they're telling their stories. How long has he been sexually assaulting these girls? Did they release anything like years? Has I don't been? think I saw anything about years, but it's like repeatedly like if he That's works just not with okay. you, like he'll do it. That's just not okay. Like I feel like why didn't they come out sooner, especially because they're right. big name celebrities. It's not like, not saying that it makes it makes a difference if they mm -hmm. weren't a big name celebrity, but I'm just surprised that like the big names like Angelina Jolie, right. they didn't come out sooner and kind of create a big like, well, he has this great reputation, but in reality, he's not such a scrupulous person. Right. So like, I'm just. I heard that Gwyneth Paltrow, um, she's one of the victims and she was like 20 something when she was working with him and he invited her to his hotel room and he was like, let's get massages. And he was like trying to touch her and everything. And she was just like, no, but I heard like, and now it's 20 years later mm -hmm. that she's coming That's out what... and saying this, like, which is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. why didn't she say something before? But. I think she said she was scared because she might get fired. So that's probably why they're like, okay. they've been holding quiet because like they know that he has a lot of power and he can do whatever he mm -hmm. wants. Like he can fire, like which is really sad that mm -hmm. that man can hold that much power over you and make you scared not to come out and tell your story. But I'm glad that they're coming out now. Yeah. But how do you feel about people like Lindsay Lohan defending him? <laughs> Why is she defending him? But Lindsay Lohan crazy. is nuts. She's like the typical child star that always ends up like going off the deep end mm -hmm. and bad things happening. I don't know. I just think she's very like, like she always has to be different. She always has to like disagree when mm -hmm. everybody else likes this one thing. She's always like, no, like I'm, I'm like this. I'm, I'm pro for it. Like you're pro for getting sexually assaulted. Yeah. Why, Lindsay? <laughs> Like, I just, I, I wasn't surprised when I heard that, but I heard another star too, I can't remember her name. She defended him too, and said that these women should have stopped him or something. You can't, you can't really, really stop a sexual yes, assault. You can't. It kind of just happens, like no. you're forced. It's not really. I'm sorry for all the women that had to go through that. Uh, apparently his wife even like divorced him and left. Yes, that's what the woman said. She said that, no, Lindsay Lohan said that his wife should be by his side. You want your, like, I don't know, Lindsay Lohan needs help. I don't know if I could be by my husband's side if someone, After if all he of did that. that. Right, yeah. I have an issue. Yes, and then they have kids together too. Ooh, those poor kids. <laughs> he should have been thinking about them before exactly. he did all that because and now then, they're going to be embarrassed for the rest of their right. lives and now they're just going to have to hear about now it's how terrible there. their like, dad is. a public figure and now he's like apologizing, saying that he needs a lot of help apparently um <laughs> saying that he's gonna like work on his personality why didn't you been do this before that's yeah some of these people were saying like 20 years ago that they were sexually assaulted right. yes you've had a lot of time to work i just uh, moving on yeah <laughs> we're gonna talk about something that's even more crazier we were discussing it mm -hmm. before this so janae Iko. She's dating Big Sean, if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. So, what did she do? She got Big Sean's face tattooed on her arm. Yes, like right there, like right there. <laughs> I would never get my boyfriend's face tattooed on me, ever. Like, ever. I, at first, when I read it, I was like, oh, she probably got his name or something. Like, a lot of people do that. She got his face. Like, and he's smiling. Like, it's just... <laughs> I don't get it. Their relationship is definitely destined for, right. for being doomed now. Like I, <laughs> for being doomed. I was in love with them, like their relationship. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh yes, their relationship goals. Now she kind of ruined that for me because you got him tatted on your face. Would you ever do that? Would you get your boyfriend's name no, tatted? No, I would never get my boyfriend's name tatted because you don't really know what's gonna happen. And I kind of just feel like that that's like, Right. A boundary that you just don't cross. Like sometimes I'll be like, if you get my name tatted, like I know it's real. But mm -hmm. that's just crazy. Like, yeah, you, that's actually do it. Do. Right. We're, we're going to pray for her too. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that's all we have for now. Up next, we have Mercedes closing out the night with industry news. Hey, guys, I'm Mercedes, and welcome back to this week's industry news. Our first news segment of the night comes from the biggest news in the industry right now. 
allegations of sexual assault coming from Harvey Winstein involving women that he has worked with on projects in the past. Three women have come forward so far since a 10-month investigation ensued. Not only has he been terminated from his own company, The New Yorker, but Disney has also fired him as a producer on their newest film, Artemis Fowl. We can expect more news to come soon about the investigation. In other industry news, Fox is being sued for using Muhammad Ali in a Super Bowl advertisement. The $30 million lawsuit has to do with Fox using Muhammad Ali in an ad without obtaining, obtaining the rights to use the boxing star. According to Muhammad Ali Enterprises, the company owns all intellectual property involving the boxer. We'll just have to keep an eye out on how this lawsuit will play out. This week, WME IMG has announced their renaming of their parent company to Endeavor. Both the co-founder of the company, Ari Emanuel, and Patrick Whitesell will be taking on the roles of CEO and executive chairman of the newly named company. The last comic standing, comedian Eliza Schlesinger, has been signed with WME this week for film and television. She had been previously signed with APA this summer for Freeform's late night talk show, Truth and Eliza, and she also worked under APA to create her scripted web series, Forever 31. Not only has she signed with WME, but she continues to be represented by Avalon Management and Bloom Hergott. Our last news piece of the night involves some of our favorite films and new up-and-coming technology. It has been announced that the new Jumanji and Hotel Transylvania 3 films will be released in virtual reality following the new Sony partnership. Sony Pictures and Reality One are partnering with VRX to produce virtual reality experiences based on Sony films. They plan to debut the technology on December 20th with Jumanji The VR Adventure, in which players will be able to create their own character and build a team to set out and lift the curse of Jumanji. The experience will be available in VRX kiosks, shopping malls, and movie theaters, with 50 locations coming to the US and the UK. Unfortunately, guys, that's the end of our show tonight. But if you want to see more, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at ENB underscore IEPTV. Make sure to tune in next week for more of your favorite news. See you next week.